Thank you for watching Taxpayer Alert. I'm Al Segala. I'll be a moderator. I'm also president of the Calaveras County Taxpayer Association. These programs are meant to inform you of all the latest things that are going on, and this show is no exception. Our guest at this session is Paul Preston, who is the leader of the New California Movement. He's president of that organization, and in, he, and in some of the counties that are going to be part of the new uh, California, they're already setting up uh, representatives, and uh, it's just some exciting news, and we're going to find out a lot about it. Paul, welcome to our show, and tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> well, thank you, Al, for having me and allowing me the forum to talk about New California State. and. Um, I'm a former educator, retired after 41 years. I started out as a, um, a custodian and worked my way up to superintendent and opened up two charter schools and um, found along the way with opening up the two charter schools that the state did not want charter schools and so we had to close them and the state kept all of our money. <laughs> and so that was kind of like, wait a minute. So when I retired, um, I, find, I found myself in production, radio production, and I was doing a radio show at the time I started about 1999. It was just a one-hour show on Sacramento Radio called the Inside Education Show. And so I just kind of expanded it when I retired and found myself on digital platforms all throughout the nation doing Agenda 21 Radio. And with Red State Talk Radio, the largest digital provider of uh, digital content in the nation, actually. We emanate out of Washington, D.C., and I do a live radio show from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. every day, except for Saturdays and Sundays. But I'm also live on local radio on Saturdays on KMYC 1410 out of Marysville, California, the so-called talk monster there. And uh, I've been doing radio and getting involved with a lot of political activities, semi-activities. But one of the things that distressed me the most when I was in the education system was the serious decline I started to see in the quality of education, um, the programs that were being stripped out of our schools, and the harm it was doing to kids. And I was really concerned about the high dropout rate you know, I started, I, it just skyrocketed in the, in the mid to uh, late 90s, and I found out it was really pretty much by design, the way that they were tearing down the programs, ultimately to lead to what we have today, which you, you have a system in California where the state really is dead, and yet it's witnessed by the fact they're not providing education for the kids. So talk about taxpayers with paying taxes without representation, you know, it's about $40 billion, $48 billion every year for education, K through 12. But for the last year and a half, we haven't had K through 12 education. Uh, it's only been marginalized. So the question is, where does all that tax money go? And I say, well, you know, there was a, a revolution uh, with the uh, Boston Tea Party at one point in time <laughs> over I don't taxing. remember that. Yeah, I was going to say you wouldn't remember that. <laughs> but it, uh, at one time, because of uh, lack of representation, taxation without representation. Now, do you have a, fam you have a family with you now? I, no, uh, we're, my family's in Southern California, and I live in Northern California. And I have extended family throughout the state and the United States. So, um, but, and do uh, they do what you tell them? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, <you train laughs> They're free well. thinkers. <laughs> They're free thinkers. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're very close. And, I, uh, of course, my family now is everybody in New California uh, that we've made uh, real great friends and strong bonds with uh, the New Californians. I like to say that we are actually our own unique ethnic group, in a sense, as New Californians, because we're sort of like the last of the, the holdovers after people have left, fled the state. And um, so we saw this coming. I saw this coming early in the 90s, and I said, there's got to be some way that we could stop the socialism that was coming to, into our state and the domination of the state itself, because California is unique in that California's constitution, which was written, there's two of them, 1850 and then one in 1879. But the 1879 constitution has been amended in this state over 600 times. Wow. And Probably by the education department. Well, not so much by the education department. Anybody who wants to put out a proposition can, and that's been a big problem because we've really altered the Constitution to the point where it's dysfunctional, to the point where it doesn't function at all. 
one of the big things that happened was in 1966 when they decided to get away from a two-year legislature. In other words, the, the legislature used to meet once every two years for two months, like Texas. Right. And they changed it and with Prop 1A back in 1966, run by Jess Unruh. They changed it to make sure that California had a, quote, more professional legislature that would meet once every 11 months every year. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you think about it, what do you get with an 11 month per year cycle, you get a lot of bureaucracy. When they're legislating every 11 months for a year, every year, year in and year out, you just get this mountainous bureaucracy, which is what we have today, right. uh, combined with, again, more alteration of the Constitution to where we have a legislature, you don't have any party system in the legislature, you have a monoparty system, and now you have a, di a, a dictator, literally in the form of Gavin Newsom, after the COVID incident of March uh, uh, 2020. And he's been a dictator. He's, been, he, he's not listening to the legislature. He doesn't have to because he's declared an executive uh, powers act, which gives him latitude to do whatever he wants to do, literally. The executive powers act, is that in the constitution? It is. And, and sadly, the Executive Power Act is, is necessary, and most states have Executive Power Acts, so they can suspend the, the, the governor can, at certain periods of time, they can suspend the power of the legislature of the court, and the governor can la act unilaterally. Uh, but every legislature has a time limit on it, right. 30 or 60 days. And interestingly enough, in 2015, the legislature, working with Jerry Brown, got rid of the time limit oh, on wow. the Powers Act. So he has indefinite power until the legislature takes the power back. So that's why he's commanding all these dictates that's coming out of him. So he literally is a dictator at this point. Right. And the reality check is he's going to remain that way until he's gone. Or if he wants to change the election date coming up here in September, he can do that. He can unilaterally do that. A lot of people don't understand how that works, but it works because he does not, uh, the, the legislature has not taken their power back, and all they need to do is a simple majority vote in, the, in each one to take their power back, but they're not doing it. They're allowing him to run free reign. And we have a one-party state at the same time. All right, it's a monoparty state, right? Yeah. Boy, it, uh, it's pretty dark clouds, but uh, they got a feeling there's some sunshine. And we might find out a little bit about that. Yeah. One of the things that uh, we in our uh, list of uh, discussion points, why the need for a breakaway old, from old California? Why do we need to break away? Well, uh, for oh, the, yeah. the basic... Well, you pretty well covered it. Yeah, that. pretty much. But there's a lot more to it, obviously. We're not represented. It's pretty obvious. We're being taxed, but we're not being represented. Um, and so the taxation, where's the money going? That's the other thing. And of course, uh, if you've been keeping up with where the money is going, the tax dollars, the tax dollars that come in from federal programs like the EDD, the Employment Development Department, they have just gone through an audit. And of course, the audit found initially there was $3 billion they couldn't account for, and that number moved rapidly up to $31 billion. In my business of the reporting with the finance people, they say that number is actually as high as $100 billion that they can't account for in the last several years. What is the state of California? State of California. Oh so my God. The, now the, we have we have uh, a state uh, official that's supposed to keep track of this stuff. Correct. And uh, they are, but they're telling us where that they can't account for it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and actually the state auditor is a very uh, fair woman. She's very, very competent. And she's just as befuddled as you and I are. Uh, where did the money go? And what were the indicators are that a lot of that money went overseas, primarily to China. Oh man, that's pretty sick. Well, yeah, and you, so there's that part of it, the the corruption that's ongoing within the the, count, the state itself, uh, plus the election system. We just went through the 2020 election, and now we're finding out that the especially with the audits that are coming out of uh, now uh, uh, Arizona. Arizona, Maricopa County, their audit system or their, their voting system is a duplicate of any one of the 58 counties here in California. Right. And they're finding that there's major fraud that has gone on. And what that's one of the things that we've discovered. In this time frame, uh, since we started to become a state, 
you know, that started really in earnest in 2017, and by 2018 in January, we actually declared our independence. We had a, a day of independence, and we we read the Declaration of Independence. We got yeah, New, that, Cal New California. New California did. That, that was January 15, 2018. We have uh, we have written 160, 161 affid uh, or uh, grievances right. to go along with our Declaration of Independence. So every Thursday. You'll see if you go to one of the locations around here by your superior court, every Tuesday, excuse me, every Tuesday at eleven o'clock, you'll find readers reading the, the weekly grievance about why we want to become liberated from the state of California and create our new state. And we're following the Constitution. Let's be clear. The Constitution says very, very clearly that in Article Four, Section Three, that if you a group of people want to form a new state from a pre existing state, then we have to get the permission of the legislature concerned and then that of the Congress. So what we're doing is... State we're, and federal. State and federal, right. So you have to get the state's permission, the Assembly and Senate, not the executive branch or the judicial branch. It's only the legislative branch. And you've been seeing these audits that have been going on. It's always the legislature that is conducting these audits. The executive branch is not, nor is the judiciary. And that's because the Constitution says it's the legislature that has voting responsibilities. Right. And that's their job. So that's why they've got a lot of powers and they can order up subpoenas, they can order people arrested, they can do all kinds of things just to find out the truth about what might have happened in a, in a, in a given, any, any given election. So they also have authority and responsibility for granting new state status to groups of people that want to form a state within a state. And that's what we're doing. And we've been following the model because it has been done three other times in American history, in, in Maine, in Kentucky, and then in West Virginia. And we're following the West Virginia model to the T. And, and West Virginia was formed in 1861, right at the beginning of the Civil War. And the reason why they formed, because they were hearing that, that Richmond, Virginia, wanted to secede from the Union and join the Confederacy. So the West Virginians, who were more like Ohioans and Pennsylvanians, they wanted to form their own state. So they organized themselves by counties and they went forward and had a convention and they said their intent was to leave and create a new state and before they could complete that and declare independence and do the process that you're supposed to do in richmond they pulled away and became the confederacy and so they could not turn to richmond and they could not get approval from richmond so what they did is they went to washington and they say look we can't satisfy article 4 section 3 and they said well you're going to have to figure out a way to do it they put together their own restructured government. And when that happened, they appealed to Lincoln, who helped them get into Congress with that structure. They then appealed to the restored government of Virginia, and they gave them approval. They went on then to Congress, and Congress granted them statehood in 1863. How do you remember all this stuff? Well, I've been through it a million times. <laughs> but, it, it's very, but it's very important to note that in California and American history today, we're in that exact same position. Because in the state of California, California uh, technically is a dead state. It doesn't uh, legislate really effectively. Uh, it, the legislation is almost meaningless at this point. We have a dictator who's ruling us. It doesn't finance its kids. The first mission, one of the first missions of the state of California is to educate the children. Right. And for the last year, going on two years, that hasn't done that. And financially, they're not in any position to even open up schools next year. So this could be before they get enough money together or if they stop, don't stop spending, which is the other thing about, you know, Taxpayers Association, they just will not stop spending. Right. You know, they got a bump and a help from Congress of $22 billion just a couple of weeks ago. What did they do? They spent $29 million out of the $22 million billion. I mean, think about that. They get $22 billion, but they overspend and then spend $29 billion. That's what they're doing down there. So this debt hole that we're in in California will never cease with that kind of mentality. I always say, why don't we just stop spending on the bureaucracies in Sacramento and put that money to the schools? But they don't even think, they don't even think in those terms. So when you have that going on, there's got to be a change that has to be made so that we can meet the needs of the people. And so far, in the last year, the only way that anything has been met in terms of needs for the people has been what we have been doing in New California. Um, we went out 
trying to assess the damage about how what happened in the, the election because so many of the people were coming to us and saying, what can New California do to straighten out this election thing? So we immediately put together four citizens committees and we traveled up and down the state and heard from witnesses about what they thought about the election. And we saw red flags all over the place, but then we went out and did an additional 25 more citizens committees last year. We were hard at work and traveling the state, paying for it as we go. And we found that the people were really suffering terribly, primarily because of the closures, the closures of schools, um, and, and of course just lack of government services, defunding the police and things like that. So we realized that we had to do something to, do, to stop all this and to uh, sort of right the ship. And uh, that's why we pressed it pretty hard now in the last uh, several months. Uh, to uh, try and do what we can do as New Californians to become a state and work a lot harder to do that. And we think that pretty soon we will be that new 51st state. Well, I think uh, um, one of the problems is our media. <clears throat> right. Our, our major media. And <clears throat> one of the... Uh, I don't know the solution about major media. You, uh, uh, what do you do when they won't report the truth? Well, That's a you, problem. Yeah, what do you do when they report things that are not true? It, it's, uh, it's very difficult. But it seems that this is heading toward a cliff. Right. And, uh, uh, and with uh, crisis comes opportunity. Right. And so <clears throat> uh, when the public and the media sees that there's a heck of a big problem, with a solution already there, thought out, there's a good chance that this could work. No, it's... You have to it, have the crisis first. That's right. That's right. And we have been planning for this crisis for a long time. Um, this crisis mm -hmm. has been visible for a long time. In fact, uh, back in 1999, when I first envisioned that we have to do something to stop this, I realized that this cliff was coming rapidly. And uh, that's why we looked at this new state option and found that that's, that's the solution that the Founding Fathers put in the Constitution. It's a relief valve for the right. Constitution because what the Founding Fathers realized is if some governor would come along in one of the states and become a dictator, um, then they'd have to reverse engineer the Constitution and reverse engineer it to a point it would become a dictatorship and put it in the position that they, when the Founding Fathers and their ancestors came to this country, they found themselves with either extremely rich people over here and serfs on the other end, right. and uh, nothing in between. And that's, a Euro, that's a Europe uh, model. model yeah. yeah, and that's not what the Founding Fathers had envisioned at all with the Constitution. And they wanted to, first of all, let everybody know that the rights that they have possess are God-given rights. Right. That all the rights that we have are God-given rights. So they declared that in the Declaration of Independence. Life, liberty, and property. Correct. And uh, all the other things that go along with the First Amendment, because it was kind of interesting when they came up with the Constitution, people didn't quite understand what they meant in 1877 to 1779. And uh, so they've had to put out the Bill of Rights. Right. to explain what those rights were, the first ten amendments. And the first one, of course, is the strongest one. That's the First Amendment, which declares that you have the right to have freedom of religion, and you have the right to freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom to peaceably assemble, and the freedom to redress of grievances. Right. And so when we declared independence, we didn't include our grievances in the Declaration. We decided to make the independence a process that declaration a process over months and years if need be. So we started reading these back in January of 2018 and we're now still doing them. We're going to go to the second chapter, what we call the second chapter of grievances, uh, to 95 grievances and we're at 67 now. It'll be 67 next week. Okay, we ought to mention a website that people can go to to get more information. Sure, NewCaliforniaState.com. That's NewCaliforniaState.com. You got your pencil? <laughs> NewCaliforniaState.com. Yeah. All right, we'll mention it again. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so we, we are moving along quite nicely. We've had uh, eight constitutional conventions, and we're moving on with the ninth one. We've invited the president to come to the ninth one. 
So we're you know, hoping that that happens. It's going to be in Fresno at the Sullivan Arena. They have a 12,000 seat arena. So you talking about Biden? No, not that president. No, my president is Donald Trump. Okay. <laughs> I haven't. I, I know what the election numbers are, so I, I have every confidence that uh, that's going to be rectified here soon. In fact, I know it's being done right now. So uh, you're going to see some very dramatic changes in the next couple of weeks uh, involving the elections. We're very uh, close to the whole process. We've actually turned over much of the work and the numbers that we have to Sidney Powell and to the president and they're using the information that we've provided. So we are very keenly aware of what's going on. We were so bothered by what we've discovered in the four uh, citizens committees by what we saw with the elections from people. We went from Shasta County down to San Diego to, to get information and everybody was saying the same things about what they thought was corruption. And now we're verifying the corruption that exists because what we're doing within our own counties about how we're working with the county officials and identifying the fraud, basically. So we su we decided to sue Gavin Newsom, and right now I have an active lawsuit with my name on it in the state of New California, and we have a lawsuit because what happened was that it, it, remember Gavin Newsom declared himself to be a dictator, and when he did, he ordered up 22 million mail-in ballots. The problem is he left off, the, the ballots were all deficient in one or the other of two statutory codes that must be on the ballot. Right. And the election code section is very, very clear that if you leave one or both off, then you may not cast nor count the ballot. They're all invalid. They're all invalid. So we're looking for a nullity in the vote that just took place in 2020 which what that would mean is that the 55 electoral votes would be removed from Joe Biden's column. They would not go to Donald Trump, but what it also would mean is that there'd have to be a re-election of all officials. All 53 members of the House of Representatives out of California would be forced to return home immediately. They would no longer have a seat in Congress. That's 43 Democrats and 10 Republicans, and one of those Democrats is called Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if she's aware of that. <laughs> she's very much aware of it. You think so? Well, no, we know she's very much, they're, we know they're very much aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see if we've uh, covered our topics. Uh, how are we doing to assure success? What is the progress? Well, the progress is, is uh, that we have uh, either whole or part of 56 counties involved. There's 58 counties in California, and we either have all the whole part of the, the, the involvement of the counties or part of them. So like as an example, Los Angeles County is a part of New California, but it's only the rural areas of Los Angeles. So the upper northern area of, California, of Los Angeles is what we're talking about, Palmdale, Lancaster. How many um, counties in New California? There's 56 either whole or part. So you're either gonna see like Alameda County, if you take the eastern side of Alameda, that's New California. The western side where Oakland is, that's old California. Uh, so, Santa Clara County is everything except Silicon Valley. So that whole rural area of Santa Clara is New California. What about Sacramento? Sacramento is the same. Uh, Sacramento is urbanized and uh, highly urbanized in and around Sacramento as well as San Francisco and then Los Angeles. It's interesting when we made up the map of the New California, we were doing like everybody else would. We're drawing lines and we've got a room about this size. We got maps all over the place and two things working on the table. And finally I said, after days of this, I said, this is stupid. I said, where are the populations? Well, they said, well, there's 40 million people in California. I said, no, no, no. Where are the population centers of California? And so we said, well, in Los Angeles and San Francisco and Sacramento. and I said, well, how many people live there? And we ran the numbers at uh, 20 million. And I said, how many in rural California? 20 million. That's the map. Oh, okay. That's the map. That's why when you take a look at our map and you see all the red, that's our counties. Okay, if... Uh, it's, it's parity. It's population. It's all population parity is what it is. So I'm looking ahead. <clears throat> in the event that uh, the uh, state and federal legislatures approve of New California, and then uh, through a process, we will have two states, the existing California, 
which would include uh, highly populated areas, and then the other one, New California, which would be the rural areas. Right. Okay. It seems like the, the uh, New California would be limited government and would tend to be more prosperous. Right. And uh, which could be an example to old California right. that uh, a new approach needs to be made. Otherwise, they'll continue the same road they were doing before. You know, there's those people who want, new, uh, want California to continue on that route. Um, we're not interested in punishing California or anybody. Right. We're interested in making sure that California is, is a success. Right. And we want a win-win for both states. It's stupid, if you think about it, to make one a loser and one the winner, because this is the United States of America. We want to be a good member of that union of states called the United States. So we're going to make sure that when this takes place, that California itself is a thriving state as well. And there's no reason why it couldn't be. But we are going to make some demands because we are going to assume some of the debt of California. We're going to offer them ways to pay off their debt because they're deeply in debt. There's a structural deficit in California, which means they're bankrupt. That's what the LAO declared, uh, that, that they have a, a structural deficit that will last for years. Uh, this, this deficit went up to $150 billion over the last year. They just can't climb out of that. But wow. we, as a booming economy, free market em enterprise, low taxation, um, will absolutely thrive. I'm sure your your tax everybody here would understand that. It's the Reagan economy. It's the Trump economy that's going to be here in, in New California. And with all of our resources, we're going to put people back to work. We're going to we're going to have mining. We're going to have logging. Um, water resources will be built out. Farming will be uh, exemplified. So we will have manufacturing return from foreign countries. We'll we'll break all the ties to China that. Um, has been drawing a lot of money out of California. The, it's bad, uh, obviously, for California to be paying so much to them. But in, in two minutes, what can people expect during the transition? Will they be able to vote for their legislature? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll be part of the transition, that there will be a transitional time frame. Right now, we actually do have a legislature that has been selected and elected by counties uh, in an informal election based upon the county chairs. So we actually have a senator for every county, which you don't right now. You have county districts. We're going to challenge Reynolds versus Sims. We're going to go into Congress and say, we're claiming back our representation, and we're going to have a senator in every county and keep them a sovereign senator, which is going to guarantee representation to everybody in rural California. Well, that's, that's good news. And the website is? NewCaliforniaState.com. NewCaliforniaState.com. NewCaliforniaState.com, and you should have had your pencil. <laughs> thank you for watching Taxpayer Alert, and thank you for being our guest, Paul. Thank you very much, Al. We'll see you again. Yes.